Afternoon all, thanks for joining us. Um, today what we're planning on doing is running through a National Cyber Security Centre uh, exercise. So a bit of background, the National Cyber Security Centre or NCSC as it's referred to is the HM government's uh, or central UK government's cyber security uh, agency. It's aligned with GCHQ but it is a public facing cyber security agency to the benefit of all both members of the public and industry. And what they've done is created some exercises that will help inform and educate uh, enterprise staff or members of the public around uh, various different cyber security threats. Today, we're going to focus on phishing email. So to set the theme and or the context here, uh, sp spotting a phishing email is becoming increasingly di and difficult and can trick almost anyone into clicking an, a link or opening an attachment, potentially infecting your system and those connected to it. Preventing this type of attack from being successful can help to mitigate a large proportion of cyber attacks. Whilst the majority of this defence is technical, cyber security is everyone's responsibility and we all have a role to play in preventing cyber attacks and minimising the impact when attacks do happen. Uh, this micro exercise focuses on exploring the role users have to play in spotting a phishing email and the steps that they can take to help mitigate a damage uh, a breach may cause. So we're going to have some audience interaction. So I'll move on to the next step. Uh, and identifying and reporting a suspected phishing email. So a definition. What do we believe? What is phishing? What would be the correct definition of phishing? If somebody would like to give me a, a definition for it. Is it a malicious um, email designed to uh, make you click it uh, that, that will cause some damage to your your business or something like that. Yeah, that's that's great, Francis. Yeah, uh, essentially, this is a, a, an email that's designed to dupe you into following a link or opening an attachment, uh, which with the ultimate intent of uh, causing harm or to. Uh, extract data or to deny service or something malicious or mal malaligned uh, but normally it's crafted in such a way that it would attempt to look legitimate to you but let's take a look at what the actual answer is so phishing is when attackers attempt to, to trick users into doing the wrong thing such as clicking a bad link that will download malware or direct them to a dodgy website Attacks can install malware such as ransomware, sabotage systems or steal intellectual property and money. They can also be used to harvest credentials to allow a bad actor to try and masquerade as somebody legitimate within the council and log on to the systems. But let's move on to another question. What is spear phishing? Can somebody give me a definition of what they believe spear phishing uh, would entail? Is that when an individual tries to attack something specific, uh, maybe finance something targeted, uh, or anybody within the business? Yeah, you're, you're right, Tam. So it's a more specifically crafted type of email that is aimed at potentially somebody in authority, somebody that would have uh, increased privileges, or for example, uh, a financial officer that might approve financial transactions, etc., uh, with the intent that could they craft a financial transaction with uh, the malicious actors bank details in there in the vain hope that we can get them to implement something. Yes, Francis. Uh, you said an authority, but um, I, I take it it could be anyone. It could be CBS support staff, uh, a junior member of staff. It doesn't need to be um, like a senior manager, does it? It could be anyone. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, in order to in initially gain access, fraudulent actors won't necessarily target uh, key, uh, the key senior members or management staff. But let's take a look at the actual definition and see what it says. So this is a more targeted campaign where the attacker may use information about employees or company to make their messages more per persuasive and realistic. So you were both right, and I probably went down a slightly different path there. 
So this is within the context of uh, how somebody would interact with uh, Glasgow City Council. Um, so exactly like you said, both Francis and Tam, it's not necessarily the higher ranking managers that will be explicitly targeted by this. It could be anybody, but it will be crafted in such a way that the context of the email would look legitimate, although it's gratuitous, but it might look as if it's come from a supplier that you normally deal with or another person that you would normally deal with, but the intent behind it is malicious. But those were good answers. Let's move on to another question. Other than email, what common methods could phishing be conducted by? Uh, phone, text. Yep, uh, phone and text messages. I think we've so all received them. We're all probably inundated with them, both on personal devices and work devices. Sorry, Bernie, were you going to mention so something? Social there? media. Social media, exactly. Yeah, gratuitous messages from cold callers on social media. Francis. Mm -hmm. uh, faxes and uh, the networked hub photocopiers, maybe. Yeah, if, if somebody's already got access or they know a fax uh, a telephone number, they could potentially send some sort of phishing message to those and uh, hope that, that, that somebody would act upon it. Let's have a look at the definition and see what it says. So, exactly right. SMS or text messages, commonly known as smishing. Malicious messages that appear to be from an official source. You see these regularly from uh, mobile numbers pretending to be HMRC or DVLA in some cases. Social media, spot on, Bernie. Uh, malicious links and attachments. Phone call or vishing, voice phishing. Cold calling uh, to elicit sensitive information such as passwords. And they could potentially do this to anybody. And obviously there's the human um, intent to help somebody that if somebody calls up and pretends to be Francis and could say, I've locked myself out of uh, my uh, device, could you just tell me what my password is? Uh, and that would be to the service desk, I would presume. And then the service desk, well, uh, we need to take you through challenge and response and all these good security controls. And the person masquerading as Francis, not you, Francis, directly, but masquerading as Francis, could put attempt to put them under pressure to elicit them to give over the password. And that's exactly the, the sort of thing that we, where we should be on the watch for. OK, let's move on to the next step. OK, identifying and reporting uh, a suspected phishing email. What percentage of UK businesses reported a fraudulent email or being directed to fraudulent websites as their most disruptive breach or attack? So we've got four options there. Where do we believe that businesses uh, rate this as their most disruptive attack? I think it would be very high. I, I, I might go for 95%, but I don't know. I think it's near 60, maybe. Uh, probably middle of the road, I would you think. Yeah, I would tend to agree. Let's go for 60. Well, there we go. Uh, we were kind of there, 43%. 43% of UK businesses I would have I would have guessed higher between 60 and 95. Uh, however, while some companies uh, experience loss of money or data, not all breaches or attacks lead to this. Direct costs may include staff being prevented from carrying out their work as in a denial of service, lost revenue, uh, if customers could not access online services. And obviously within uh, Glasgow City Council's context, this could be uh, citizens services such as bin lorry collections or some other service that Glasgow City uh, Council delivers to its citizens that could be disrupted as a result of this. So let's go on to the next step. So identifying and reporting a suspected phishing email. This is a case study. So as an example, one high income charity had suffered a data breach uh, uh, after an employee email account was hacked. The email account sent a fake supplier invoice worth around £10,000 to their finance department, which a team leader mistakenly approved. When considering the cost of this breach, the initial cost considered was the stolen £10,000. They, consider, they considered the recovery cost, but felt this was uh, negligible, as securing the hacked email account was relatively straightforward. However, they did not initially discover, uh, consider the ongoing cost as a result of the breach. 
all new supplier invoices now have to be approved by senior finance staff, an ongoing cost that senior managers had not considered. So it's something to bear in mind. It's not simply fixing what was broken or putting a, pro a control in to help that. There's also other attributed costs to that. Uh, if we move on to the next step. So identifying and reported suspected phishing email. We'll have a chat about this and I'll make this bigger so everybody can see it on the screen. Can you identify the sus suspicious elements of this email? So let's take 30 seconds and have a quick look at this. What I would suggest to do is have a look at the intent of the language, uh, who the originator is. Is it asking you to do something? Uh, is it playing on your human emotions to say it's urgent? Those sort of things. If everybody's happy, we can then have a discussion about uh, what this actually entails and what identifiers can we actually take from this message that would uh, show us that or identify that this is potentially malicious. I think the, the first thing that pops up to me is the kind of generalise that they're saying that it's um, suspicious transactions on your debit, but it's, it's generalising the kind of dear customer you would expect if that was legitimate, or I certainly would expect that that was addressed directly to me and named me as opposed to being a, a kind of general um, address there as a dear customer. I'd agree, John. Yeah, exactly. If this is somebody that you regularly deal with and they know you as a customer, most financial institution, but most vendors that you have an account with or that you're registered with will always attempt to address you by your name to personalise it. When it's a generic salutation, like dear customer or dear friend, yeah, that would sort of set my alarm bells ringing as well. The, the spelling and some of the language is a bit dodgy. Uh, uh, you're currently made disabled off and adding new PES plural. Yeah, that it, seem right. Exactly, Francis. So that that would be another sort of trigger to uh, raise your suspicions because um, if this was a, a legitimate business and a a, a repute that the, these sort of emails will obviously reflect the reputation of the business and are generally automated or pre-prepared emails. They wouldn't have these type of uh, significant spelling or grammatical mistakes. Can anybody point out anything else? I think also it's asking you to give your personal information. Uh, you would normally log into your main sort of banking stuff. You wouldn't do it through a link. So give your name, personal information that may include passwords, etc. Exactly right. Yeah. Uh, what I would suggest is if you were attempting, if you, you received an email like this and you felt that maybe it was legitimate, instead of following the link, go to the legitimate site where you know you have your account that you always generally follow and then log in through the normal procedure there to update your information and don't follow the link. So even if this was a legitimate email, at least you've managed the risk or you've reduced the risk of it if it was fraudulent because you've not followed the link within the email, but you have gone to the legitimate site. So let, let's take a look and see uh, what the actual uh, what, what the actual ad answers are. What, what have they identified as potentially fraudulent with this? So the items in yellow are where they've identified there's been uh, triggers to that we should be looking for for fraudulent activity. The one at the top, the originator, the email address that this is originated from. If this was a legitimate company, they would more than likely own the correct domain for their email address. So the fact that there's a one instead of an I is a bit of an identifier that maybe this isn't legitimate. Similarly, using a .zip file to uh, supply an attachment. You should be wary of attachments anyway, but .zip files can contain other files that might have malware. Exactly like we said, a generic salutation, dear customer. If this is a known vendor or a known supplier or a, a service that you subscribe to, they will always attempt to call you by your name. 
exactly like uh, a number of us have said, uh, the grammatical and spelling errors within the email are other identifiers that uh, we should be looking for and hopefully identify that potentially there's something suspicious about it. Similarly, the urgency of what it's asking you to do is playing on the heartstrings. It's urging you to take immediate action to do this uh, and by doing so to follow the link. Now, had this link been real, uh, in most circumstances, if you hover your mouse over the link, it would give you a little indication or a tool tip uh, to identify where that website is or what that website would look, look like. And unfortunately, we can't demonstrate this on this uh, exercise, but I would urge you to have a look when you hover over links to see if that website looks legitimate to you. Is it what you know the legitimate master debit website would look like from this context? But let's have a look at uh, actually what NCSC have said that we should be looking out for. So dangerous file extensions and attachments, these can contain, it can be concealed within .zip files. So within there, there may well be a Word document or an Excel document, but those documents may contain malware or malicious macros. Suspicious email domains, from public domains, nonsensical, misspelled or concealed. And in this case, it was misspelled by a one instead of an I. Poor spelling and grammar, especially if alleged reputable company. Uh, like we said, if this was a, a professional organisation, the quality control on these emails would be checked and you wouldn't expect it to have gratuitous spelling or grammatical mistakes. Generic communications, using terms like dear customer to, de to deliver automated mass attacks, not the customer's name. Suspicious links where the destination does not match the company or the context. So like I said, unfortunately, we weren't able to demonstrate it, but hovering over the link will normally give you an insight into what that website is. And then, like I said, sense of urgency, attempting to provoke an immediate reaction without thinking. Is it urging you? Is it playing on, on your anxieties that you must follow this link or that you must follow this uh, immediately rather than taking the time to go to where you know the legitimate website is to fill in those details. Is everybody happy with that? Is there any questions you would like to ask about uh, that that element of the exercise? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think so. Just quite, I think if I'm being honest, probably just looking at that has made me think of fishing what it actually is in terms of we're almost like the fish in this sort of thing and they've dropped that kind of line in there hoping that somebody will bite and catch on to it and I, it's probably just now looking at that that I've, I've realised the whole kind of fishing thing in the context of it does does kind of marry up and match in. Yep, yeah, it's the yeah. hook to hook them in. Yeah, Sorry, yeah if you're busy and, and you get hit by one of these things it's it could be so easy just to you know miss something it's quite frighteningly easy to to miss something with one of these messages. Absolutely that if you think of it the attackers only have to get lucky once but as staff members, we have to be vigilant all the time. So it's vigilance is key with these this exercise and with identifying phishing. Look for these commonalities. Look for things that don't suggest or sound right or smell right or something like that that would would lead you to believe there's something a bit suspicious about this email. That you've just got to remember, staff members are the first and last line of defence. So. Well, there are plenty of technical controls out there that will help prevent the bulk of this type of email getting through. Some will always get through. There's also the risk that third party suppliers could be compromised that are outside of our control. And it's identifying if they've not informed us that they've encountered a problem or suffered a cyber attack, but somebody's tried to generate something from their legitimate account that looks to be the best part of correct, but there might be some key missing issues in there such as they might not necessarily know the customer name so if they normally call you by your name when they interact with you over email but then in one instance don't or that you're not expecting or normally receive an attachment for from them or something looks suspicious don't click on the links raise it to the service desk or delete it and phone the company directly the point of contact directly or some other form of communication method to contact them directly to see if they've been impacted with anything. But well done, everybody. 
I think I think that's a great insight, and there was some great feedback there of uh, uh, what what makes up a phishing email. And I think and I hope that everybody's taking something from this. Yep. Well, definitely, yep. That's great. Thanks.